Hey guys, my name is Leon, and in this video, let's finally talk about how to build a VESC. So for a VESC building, things are always out of stock, and sometimes they get new firmware or hardware update, and then like sometimes they get to be not compatible with each other, or sometimes the firmware update will introduce some new feature that made this whole process like completely redundant. Um, so if you're looking for a very comprehensive build guide and you expect to just follow it every step along the way, it's not gonna work unless you order the exact parts that I mentioned here, which you most likely won't be able to. Right off the bat, you need to learn how to solder. It's not too difficult. Um, you need to know how to use a multimeter, especially to check for polarity, voltage, and continuity. Also, buy a fire extinguisher. This is not a joke because you're gonna be working with high capacity battery cells, high voltage electronics, and Future Motion is notorious for booby trapping their boards. And if you screw something up, it will explode. I have things explode to my face before. Like last time I soldered my FMBMS to be charge only and it blew up like the fire was like this tall. Make sure that you have a fire extinguisher next to you that you can always grab. And make sure you know where it is. Don't like hide in your closet or something. So this build guide heavily exploits the fact that a U-Box 80 volts, 100 amp, fits perfectly inside of the stock Future Motion controller box. And I've never seen anyone do this before. My friend Maeve, I think she figured it out on her own and like passed this on to the rest of us. And within our New York City circle, three writers have already done this and it's been very successful. So I feel comfortable recommending this to everyone for their own builds. So this approach basically uses a U-Box and we're reusing the entire stock XR enclosure. So you basically already have all the parts to build a VESC and you're just missing a few parts um, including the controller basically. This controller is the U-Box 80 volt 100 amp and this controller can support up to 80 volts, actually up to 18S battery, so you're not able to use a 20S battery with this. And it also only supports up to 100 amps. The little Fokker supports 120 amps. So with this approach, you're losing about 20% of torque on the low end. Um, but if you're willing to forgo that little bit, you are going to get a lot of quality of life stuff. For example, um, it has a 12 volt port, so you can wire LEDs directly to the box without any other LED module. Um, so I wired mine to, well, she helped me wire mine to uh, run both front and back LEDs just directly off the U-Box, which is really nice. Mm. Other quality of life stuff includes, um, when you buy the U-Box, it comes with a lot of stuff, uh, including one Bluetooth module. So you're getting this basically out of the box. You don't have to solder your own or like, make your own, buy your own on Amazon for like 50 bucks. Um, other quality of life uh, includes a fuse, which um, this is this is my controller, this is her controller. She she put a fuse here, this fuse also came with the U-Box. I opted to not use a fuse, but if you use a fuse, you have to like do some weird shit. She's gonna like talk more about it later. Um, so all of these quality of life stuff, you're going to get for free with a U-Box. And the U-Box is also cheaper. The U-Box is about 150, 160 bucks with all the accessories and the Fokker is around 300 bucks just for the Fokker. So this is a really quick and dirty way to convert your, your XR into VESC. So far we have three boards in our New York City area that we converted with this method. And so far only my board blew up. And I'm going to talk about how you can mitigate that. So when you get your XR box, when you open it up, the stock XR box, the controller is stuck to the lid. So you unscrew a few screws, you take the controller out, and then there's going to be a plastic layer here underneath the controller box, this layer is going to hold the thermal pad. So you basically want to take this out. And then there's also going to be a stud like right here. And then the stud's going to look something like this. And then you basically want to, you want to trim it with an angle cutter, or you can take, you said you can take a hammer and then hammer it out. So after you do that, um, you want to order a few of these connectors. You can desolder the ones on the controller, but I personally don't think they are worth the effort. I'm going to leave the links uh, in the description, but make, make sure you get the PCB version for the Switchcraft because these have really, really slim pins, um, which, is, which makes them a lot more low profile so that when the U-Box is sitting on top of it, it doesn't touch the Switchcraft pins. Um, and then for these, this one you can order off of Maker's PEV. They sell this whole thing assembled with the a bullet connector so that it just goes straight into the U-Box. Um, this one, make sure you solder this according to how your battery is wired. My battery has a charge and discharge circuit so that um, I have these, these two wires. This one goes out to the charge port and then this positive and negative goes out to the battery. And then the battery also goes, feeds in this big ass 
cable that goes to um, the, the controller. So this one really depends on what battery you're using, and then make sure to wire accordingly, basically. Other than that, make sure you trim a little bit off of these ends so that if, if you don't, it's not going to sit in the box. So make sure you trim a little bit off of here and here. You can just use, again, use your, use your angle cutter and then trim this part out. When it's trimmed out, this basically just fits perfectly in there. It's almost as if this is designed for the stock controller box because like when it's pressed in, you can see it's, it's really not extruding, protruding that much. And it actually fits really, really nice if you do this correctly. Oh, also you need to take the power button out and then put a new power button. The back and the harness, this totally depends on what battery you're using. So this isn't part of the, the build guide. If you decide to go with out of BMS, make sure you do it safely. So just a couple more things about the um, about my box here is um, for one, I I uh, use the 90 amp fuse that um, comes default uh, 90 120 amps. I don't know. It's it's some, some it's the fuse that comes stock with the with the U box and um, it comes with PCB mounted XT90s on it. But I desoldered those on both ends um, and then just soldered. Um, directly onto the U-Box on one side, and then XT60 on the other side. So I was able to fit that fuse in there. Um, so that's an option. You don't have to use it, but if you want to, um, that's probably the only way it's going to fit in here. And then for um, uh, mounting the U-Box itself, uh, you can either just friction fit it in there. I did that for the first month of writing, and it was okay. Um, but uh, later, I since there are these um, nice mounting uh, holes on the top of the of the box or the bottom of the box here. Um, I went ahead and just drilled out two holes in my lid. Uh, I just used uh, some paint marker on here and then pressed it down to see where the holes needed to be and then drilled those out. And then uh, these require a 2.5 millimeter or an M2.5 screw um, and then uh, that secures the the U box nicely to the lid, um, which just make makes sure that it's like solidly attached there, so that you won't get any sort of IMU drift, and um, also just making sure that it's securely pressed up onto the lid for better heat dissipation. Although the U box has really good heat dissipation in and of itself, I've never seen my uh, MOSFETs get over uh, like 40 degrees, which is very good. Um, yeah, what else? Uh, the, the LEDs um, that we're using here uh, are, are, is a, a LED module that I came up with. Um, it's just pretty uh, cheap and dirty. It's just a 3D printed part here. It's just a little 3D printed backing and then a regular RGB LED strip. Nothing special about the 3D printed part. It's like literally just a block of plastic. Yeah, or you, yeah, you can just cut up like, um, I don't know, like a vegetable container from the store or like anything that ha has sort of the same thickness there. Um, and then it's just uh, the regular adhesive sort of like RGB lights that you use for smart home stuff. Um, I just super glued those on there. Just attach the wires to whatever colors you want. So um, of course you can get red, blue, or green by attaching to just one. Or you can get any of the tertiary or the secondary colors there, so cyan, magenta, or yellow. Um, or if you attach to all three, then you'll get white from the red, the green, and the blue. The power button that comes with the U box is a smaller diameter. The one that's needed for the XR box is a 19 millimeter, um, and I think the one that comes with the U box is 17 millimeter. So. It's possible to attach the 17 millimeter. Um, it just requires a little bit of working around. Uh, so we put the nut on the outside instead, so it holds it in place, so that um, it, you know, it, you can push against it and it won't push into the box. And then just use some hot glue on the inside. Um, so definitely not the the best option, but it's stuff. It's doable, so you can get it up and running with just the parts that come with. Um, but then you can also order just um, another latching, a 19 millimeter latching power button. You can switch this around. So um, normally it would be off is when it's popped out. And then when you press it in, it turns on. But if you switch the normally uh, closed and normally open contacts so that it's connected to the normally closed by default, then that means that whenever it's popped out, 
then the board turns on, and whenever it's popped in, that turns off, which is slightly safer because um, it's possible for on a really big hit that the button will pop out. And you'd rather have it fail on than fail off. So um, if you make it such that when it's pressed in, it turns off, and when it's pressed out, it turns on, then it's much less likely that you'll nosedive um, after hitting a curb or something like that. Hope you guys find that to be helpful. Uh, again, here's a wiring diagram if my explanation was not clear enough. Just make sure you guys buy the right parts because actually a lot of these parts have slight variations of the same component. So um, some of them are for like board mounted, some of them are standalone parts. So just make sure you guys buy the part that I link and you should be fine. Uh, yeah, so use caution when you're DIYing one wheels and have fun, bye.